Have you Googled yourself? No, seriously, it's called ego surfing. It's a thing. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about how to Google yourself and own what comes up under your brand. Because boy, that is so important. And people will make a split second decision on whether they trust you or not based on what they see in search results. Okay, you ready? We're going to Google ourselves. So what we're gonna do is you know, I want you to go to google.com and I want you to put your either your personal name in or your company name in. No, let's take a little step back and tell you why, why I have such information about this. My son got in a lot of trouble. He made some decisions in high school. Maybe you guys all made great decisions in high school, but it's a whole new world now. And I had to start looking at his search results. Now everything worked out great. It was all cleared up, but Google has a very long memory and anything that's public record is going to show up under his name. And then my brain says, okay, he's going to get married someday and her father is going to Google my son's name. And that is not going to prevent him from marrying the love of his life. So I started this venture around how do we protect our name? So this is not just about your company name. It's about your personal name. It's about your kids. It's about things that you sell, services you offer. And I was very quickly and abruptly reminded while I was doing this for my son that, you know, we make mistakes. Employees leave, they're unhappy. Maybe, you know, one of our products didn't do great. So when we're Googling ourselves, it's very important that we understand there are three different components to Googling yourself, also called ego surfing, which I think is hilarious. So when you're thinking about it, the very first thing we want to do is just Google your name. No INC, no LLC, just go in and Google your name. I want you to then take a step back, look at what shows up under your name. Clearly we should see your website address. Well, what else do you see up there? Like you can control every single thing that shows up in your search results. So let's just take a quick look. We go to Google and then we're going to go and I'm going to type in Findability University. Now Findability University, that's my brand name. The problem is I Google myself. I look at stuff. I search for SEO stuff all the time. I'm looking for findability things. You know, I, I geek out on this stuff all the time. The problem is, is that that's all remembered by the search engine. It no, I mean by the browser, it has cookies and cash and it knows where you've been, what you like. My husband's really into 3D printers and drones. Yes, we are all geeks in my house. And his search result is going to be full of those things. How do I create a unpersonalized search result? So we're going to go into something called incognito. Doesn't that sound cool? Incognito. So when you go back to your browser, go under file and new incognito window. It's also arrow command N on a Mac. I don't know what it is on a PC. Sorry. <laughs> you can, you can Google that. Now when you open it, check this out. You get this little spy guy that pulls up and that was actually the inspiration for marketing espionage when I wrote that book. So now that we're incognito, you'll see a spy guy on the front. Now I'm using this in Chrome, but you there's in private browsing for Safari. Their safety browsing for Firefox. It creates that unpersonalized search result. So when I go to Google, so now in incognito, I'm going to go to Google. Now I'm going to Google my name. So if you are going in and Googling yourself all the time and you say, Hey, we're number one under that keyword, it may not actually be true. Google is giving you search results based on what you already love, what you've already searched for. So we've got to remember that we want an unpersonalized search result so that we can see how people see our brand from the outside looking in. That's the most important part. I spend most of my time training clients on how to unpersonalize their searches and to take a look at how did the outside world see me when they're looking in through a search result. Now we're looking at our search result under your name. Now you could be your name, your son's name. Oh, and by the way, I found out my son's Snapchat handle, <laughs> prepare yourself, is pimp daddy 429. I can't make this stuff up. So then what you do is once you find your child's Snapchat handle, you put it into Google in quotes and their whole social media life will unfold in front of you. Not their name, their Snapchat handle and put that in and brace yourself. Hopefully it all looks great. But as parents, we got to keep an eye on that stuff because that could prevent them from a lot of other things in the future. And now that I've experienced this, I hope that you will take this seriously and do this. Set up a Google alert for your son's pimp daddy 429. Keep an eye on it. <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> okay, so moving on, we're looking at our search results. So you'll see here, Findability University, I have a wonderful kind of screen capture right here. You'll see the primary domain 
and then you'll see six pop-outs. Now, you'll see these pop-outs that come up right underneath, and I'm gonna highlight them right here for you. We don't get to choose what these say, guys, but they are the most visited pages in our website. So when you're looking at these, how can I adjust what I'm seeing? When I Google myself, I can control what I see here. So look down on all the assets that come up. So for me, I have my LinkedIn profile, my Pinterest board, interview I had with a, a client, a speaker hub, and my Facebook page. So I'm good with all those. Those all look really solid. And I also see videos. I see three videos. And then I also see my Google local listing. Now what's interesting is you're like, well, why these assets? If you don't like what shows up here, you have a couple choices. The first thing is buy a paid ad on your name. That's gonna kick the guy on the bottom off and now you're gonna own all those other listings. So do a paid ad just under your name. And the nice thing about a paid ad is that you can control the, the language. So if you have a seasonal business like Christmas, Easter, New Year's, you can go in and change that. As with an organic listing, you can't really change that. Once you get that to rank, you kinda of wanna leave it alone. So you can do a paid ad. Also a couple ninja tricks here is SlideShare. I don't know if you guys have heard of slideshare.net, it's owned by LinkedIn. So SlideShare is like a Wikipedia of all PowerPoints. So a quick hack is to go in, create a PowerPoint deck, like four slides. One's about us, services, testimonials, contact us. Name it your company name, upload it to SlideShare, and it will bump one of these other things off the page. I've tested it, it works, it's a great little hack. The other thing you can do too is think about do I have all my social media set up? Am I seeing my social media here? Another thing is, and as you can see on my page, I'm gonna do something, it's called Command F. Um, on a PC, it's gonna be Control F. Now, what we're gonna do, F is in Frank, we're then gonna just type in your name, and you'll see as I'm typing this in, you will see how my name highlights. So I'm gonna do Findability and then University. Now, what you're seeing here is everything that has my name in is now highlighted, which is pretty cool. But what you're looking at is the reason these things rank here is because your name is in them. So we wanna make sure that if we are going to be titling videos, you put Findability University right in the top front of the video. You'll see here that I have three videos. All of them have Findability University right in the top of the title of that video. If I don't like the videos that are showing up, I'm gonna to go to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna either make those videos private or I'm gonna tweak them or tweak some other videos to show up there. Video is an incredibly powerful form of advertising online. But I, under my name, I wanna make sure they're seeing the current testimonials, they're seeing my latest work, my latest keynotes, and I just go in there and finesse the title. It's great, works really fast too. Now another ninja trick is Pinterest. And people are like, oh, Pinterest is just for ladies who are searching for nail polish and pictures of their pets. No, not any longer. Male demographic is the fastest growing um, on Pinterest, and the average time on Pinterest is 40 minutes. And if you're a lady who likes to search for decorating ideas, cooking recipes, men, you, you know, whatever you're gonna search for, whatever your personal tastes or favorites, Pinterest is like a massive Google Images. Google Images is the number two way people search on Google. So think about the power of Pinterest. If you haven't checked out Pinterest, go and set your account up and they have something called boards, and they're literally pegboards. So think about it. each board is a different pegboard. This is on SEO, and this is on keywords, and this is on websites, and this is on Google. So you can have all these different boards. Name one of those boards your company name, and it will show up here within like 24 to 48 hours. So now we've bumped up another element. So I wanna see a paid ad, if you wanna kick another one off the bottom. I wanna see your website, and then your social media, your videos, and then even a slide share or a Pinterest board. So at least now that the, the listings that are coming up under your name are your choosing, <laughs> not just by haphazard findability. We don't want that. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is Google Images. So similar to SlideShare and Pinterest, they're image-based search engines. I'm sure a lot of you have been onto Google Images, but let's talk about Google Images. Now, when you do this, kind of sit back, prepare yourself, because sometimes this can be like the wild, wild west of images. So when we look at this, I want you to remember, first of all, don't beat yourself up what comes up here. Ideally, I would like to see not just all logos here. So when you look at mine, you can just go in and search for Findability University and you'll go to images. I have made a study over the last couple years to take pictures of my clients and putting their testimonials right on the image. So you'll see on my Google images, I have three or four testimonials 
over top of the person's picture holding their certificate. And this is a wonderful way to convey a visual marketing piece, if you will. And the Google Images is the number two way people search on Google. It's incredibly powerful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the very first image that comes up under your name. Click it one time. You will see where this image resides. Click it again, and now you're gonna see exactly where that image is on what page. So mine comes up to a Meet Findability University page, and there's my logo right at the top. So I have a couple choices now. I can leave it alone, I'm fine with that, or I just change out that image that's on that page. Google, for whatever reason, has decided that's the image. I don't have time to figure out why Google thought that was the image, it just is. So I'm gonna hunt and gather. I'm gonna to go to Google Images, I'm going to search my name or whatever, whatever item you would like to come up with your product or service. And then you're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna pick on the very first image. I'm gonna to go to the page. I'm gonna see where that lives. If I don't like my Findability logo there, then I can switch it out with something else. The trick is naming it Findability University 1.jpg. Not image one, which is the way your web developer named those images. Go to your website, find um, eight or six images, name them findabilityuniversity.1.jpg, findabilityuniversity2.jpg, findabilityuniversity3.jpg, and those images in Google Images will shuffle, and you can control the story of images around your name. Get those tightened up because it is a very powerful way that people are going to judge your company, they're going to evaluate the quality of your services, and do you just look fun? Do you look friendly? Do I wanna hang out with you? This is a very important part of your online marketing mix. Hey, thanks so much. If you like the content that you're seeing on this video today, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell that's right next to it so you get alerted to our daily YouTube videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Oh.